Oh, really? <laughs> you want to sit with me? Well, I guess I'm stuck here now. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Carissa Delane, in case you didn't already know, and I am Diary... You just bit me! I am Diary... Ow! Did you not like that intro? Do you have something better to say? This is Mr. Scruffles. He does not want to be forgotten. Do you? And I am Diary of a Dressmaker, or... The dressmaker who makes a diary. Stop biting me! What? I wanted to show you a video today on how I make my modern clothing look vintage. I've been dressing kind of vintage core now for a couple years. Not every day. I do love a good pair of jeans and t-shirt, but quite often. And a lot of the things I own are actually modern clothes. I don't often uh, go out and purchase actual vintage items because A, I'm afraid of breaking them, and B, I can't afford that. So I have a couple vintage items that I really, really love and cherish, but for the most part, I'm doing modern things. And I've discovered some tips and tricks along my journey of dressing that I thought I might pass on. Using these tips and tricks with your modern day items, I think, in my opinion, will make your items look more vintage and kind of help you figure out your niche, what you like about dressing vintage, maybe some things you want to invest in, or just to see if you actually like this sort of vibe. If you don't like it, then you didn't spend any money doing it. If you do really like it, you know what you want to do with your clothing choices from now on. I've also found that this works really well with my actual vintage pieces. It makes me look like so much more vintage from looking kind of, ah, vaguely vintage to, oh wow, they're going for a look. That makes it sound really awkward. That makes an outfit go from, oh, you're wearing that to church to, I go from looking like, oh, you tried on your grandma's dress to, oh, you are your grandma in 1950. Maybe that's weird, but I, that's the aesthetic I'm going for is 1950 teenage grandma. So most of the items I buy, I would classify as modern, um, simply because they're from big name brands. I don't always buy them from said big name brands store. Most of that would be from when I was in high school or a couple years back before I really knew that fast fashion was bad. So I still have a lot of those clothes because I'm not gonna just throw them out right now. They're still perfectly working clothing. For the most part now, I buy almost all my clothing from Goodwill or I make it myself. So a lot of the clothing I'm gonna show you is from, I would say the last 10 to 15 years. It's still very much on trend, I hope, <laughs> or at least in a millennial sort of way. Uh, and yeah, without further ado, here we are. Here is my sample look. A ruffled button-up from Naf Naf and a navy pleated Forever 21 skirt from my high school days. This skirt is a little short for my vintage taste now, but it's probably one of my most worn clothing items, so I'm planning to make a new version of it in the future. Oh, and a pair of gray pointed flats. I'm wearing these for all the looks, but you can't really see my feet in many of these shots. Okay, so first things first, nix the modern items. Although my Fitbit is adorable, last I heard they were not around in ye olden vintage days. Same goes for fanny packs and Nike sneakers, anything with the word smart before it, AirPods, iPods, CD players, Walkman, and whatever else you youths are up to these days. So second thing I recommend is the hair. This can really make anything look vintage. I know people, of course, had straight hair in the 50s, but the curly hair is one of the things that just brings us back. This is really inexpensive to do. I use a few packs of foam rollers I got from CVS, the pink and the green ones. They're probably like two to four dollars a pack. I'll link my favorite tutorial to do hair down below by Jessica Kelgren Fozard. And voila, wasn't that easy? Look at her, so vintage. You don't have to do this exact hair, of course. Personally, I prefer it when my hair is a little bit longer or my curls a bit less full, but you see what I mean though, adding some curls really does change everything. All right, next up is another easy one, red lipstick, whatever shade takes your fancy. This one is a pretty old Clinique lipstick. I don't remember the shade now because the name has fallen off the tube. It's not my favorite for staying power, but I really like the color. 
Giving it a nice Cupid's bow, too, really makes it look vintage. Okay, so maybe lipstick was a no-brainer. This next one was not, to me at least. Jewelry. I know, right? Why did I only discover it this year? This really ups the ante on all my vintage looks. The hair clip is a cheap one, probably from Forever 21 or Claire's or something. I really don't know. I've had it for a long time. All the rest of the jewelry I got this year from a box of my Nana's jewelry. I ended up with two watches and a small box full of brooches and clip-on earrings, and I love them. I know absolutely nothing about dating jewelry, so I wear whatever matches the best and feels like the right time period. I know these pieces would all fall somewhere between the late 50s to probably the late 80s, maybe early 90s, just based on when my grandma would have been buying it. If you're not blessed with an Avon-loving grandma leaving you all her costume jewelry, you can find vintage jewelry at thrift shops and flea markets for usually a really good deal. People only want the valuable stuff and leave all the perfectly lovely fake stuff. I'd much rather wear fake jewelry so I wouldn't care if it were to get lost or damaged. I like looking for anything with pearls. I think that looks super vintage and also sort of gaudier, larger pieces of jewelry. For some reason, that just looks more vintage to me. Simple jewelry is, of course, perfectly lovely, but I think because I wear that in my modern clothing so much that it just doesn't feel as old-fashioned to me. With that out of the way, I'm feeling a little underdressed in this sleeveless top. Time to add a jacket. I got this jacket from Ross like a million years ago and only discovered recently that it works so well for wearing vintage on colder days. Yeah, maybe the asymmetrical front isn't super vintage accurate, but the tight fit and kind of tailored look of it definitely makes me feel classy, and that's all that matters, right? The color balance is going a little crazy now, sorry about that. Black with navy and a white wall was not well thought out on my part. And my final tip to up your vintage game is to add a hat, gloves, and or parasol. I got all of these from a thrift store. The hat is actual vintage, and I wear it quite often, but if you don't have that, a little beret would probably give a similar effect. The gloves and parasol are not vintage, and you could probably get something quite similar from a costume store. I don't wear these every single time, as you'll see in some of my other sample looks, but these ones are just really fun if I'm wanting to go super vintage. All right, I'm ready to take on the world as a 1950s teenage grandma. Not entirely sure what I meant by that in my intro, but I have a sort of vague idea and it's a hilarious image, so I'm keeping that. And just to show you that these tips can work with almost anything, here's some more of my favorite vintage bounding outfits that I wear quite often. I am so exhausted after all of that, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I am very warm because the light that I have on for that is very hot and it's summer in LA. So that was a lot for me, uh, trying on all those clothings, especially the winter coat. That was warm, but I like playing dress up, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope these were some good little tips and tricks for you. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this, if you wanna see more, or if you've already heard these before and you're like, Carissa, these are lame. You can let me know in the comments as well because hey, algorithm. And if you've made these work for you, send me a picture on Instagram at Diary of a Dressmaker because I would love to see that. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and tell me how much you love me. So yes, thank you. Bye. <laughs>